we are talking about the specific challenges that I see among early stage investigators writing their bio sketches. So if you're new around here, I'm Sarah Dobson. I'm a research grant consultant, and my team and I help early career researchers get funded at NIH. And so by now, if you've watched a few of these, you know how important a strong bio sketch is, not only for you, but for your entire research team. But let's talk more specifically about some of those issues that you might be experiencing as a, an early stage investigator writing your bio sketch as PI. So one of the things that I notice among ESIs who are writing bio sketches is that they still tend to describe themselves as quite junior or early in their career. And there is a bit of a fine line here, right? Because you definitely want to indicate in your bio sketch that you are an early stage investigator so that you can take advantage of that um, benefit as an early stage investigator. But you also don't want to sound like you are an ESI. And so here's kind of what I mean. So for example, in your personal statement section, what I see a lot among ESIs is language like my research interests and my career goals. And they'll write their personal statement almost like a um, sort of a like a biography or a chronology, right? So first I did my PhD and then I did a postdoc and then I did some training here. And it's all very sort of linear in terms of here's how I've progressed through my career, right? which is fine, but there's a better way to do that. And so what I recommend doing instead is, first of all, in terms of the language that you're using, you want to talk about your program of research, right? Not just your research interests, but what is the program of research that you have developed and that you are pursuing, right? That demonstrates leadership. It demonstrates the sort of trajectory that you're on as a scientist, right? It sounds a lot more robust and a lot more concrete than talking about your research interests. Likewise, when you're talking about your career goals, that is a sure sign that you are still stuck in career development award territory, right? Um, you want to sort of establish that you like you you're already pursuing those career goals. You're not talking about it in terms of this is what I want to achieve. Um, you're not sort of even really mentioning career goals in that sense. You're talking about your research objectives, right? Um, so you're getting away from talking about how you're going to build up your career and you're focusing more on your program of research and where that's headed and what those sort of big scientific problems are that you're trying to solve. Okay, so that's number one. And then when we actually get into the sort of biography part, instead of doing that, instead of saying, you know, first I did my PhD and then I did my postdoc and then I trained here and did that and got my first, you know, faculty position, instead of doing that, you want to talk about it more in terms of how your skills and experience relate to the project that you're proposing, right? If you're a PI on this project, you want to talk about your specific skills and responsibilities and roles that you're taking on in the project. So first of all, what, what is your specific role on the project? What does it mean <laughs> that you're the PI, right? What are you going to be doing? So there's obviously, you know, the team leadership aspect, but there's also the research leadership. And so you want to speak to both of those things. But you also want to talk about how the skills and experience that you have developed over the course of your career are a perfect match for what you are proposing to do, right? Especially early on when you are applying for research funding, you want to demonstrate that you're moving from strength to strength, right? That you are building upon the, uh, the skills and expertise and experience that you have been kind of working on up to this point, right? Um, there are some mechanisms, of course, where you can uh, argue for a pivot and that you're doing something completely different. But most of the time, in uh, especially 
especially if you are early in your career, you want to demonstrate that you, you are on this trajectory, that you have been building up these skills and this experience and this expertise, and that that all lends itself perfectly to what you are proposing to do now, right? So instead of just talking about, here's where I started and here's where I am now, you want to sort of synthesize that in relation to what it what you're proposing to do, what what the research is that you're proposing to do. The last thing you want to do in the personal statement is talk about the team that you've assembled, right? If you're coming at this as PI, you want to talk about the team of experts that you've assembled and if at all possible, how you've already worked together successfully right? What sort of um, products of those collaborations can you already show? That would be a perfect place, you know, in those four um, publications that you can list at the end of the personal statement section, that would be a great place to highlight some of the papers that you have written with members of the research team that are um, participating in this proposal, right? You want to show that you can assemble a great group of people and that they have, um, work together successfully previously so that you are really strengthening that argument for the uh, the collaborative nature of the team, the productivity of the team, and the ability of the team to, to produce results, right? So all of those things are ways that you can enhance just that first section of your bio sketch, that, that first narrative section of your bio sketch, the personal statement, right? Where you're talking about your strengths uh, as a PI and the roles and responsibilities that you're taking on in the project. And remember that even though you want to highlight the fact that you are an ESI so that you can take advantage of those benefits, you don't want to sound like you're so early in your career that you can't, uh, that you're not prepared for uh, leading such a, a massive project, right? So you want to come at it with some confidence. You want to come at it with uh, some language, of course, that conveys that confidence. And again, that's really about um, talking about your program of research and kind of situating yourself along this trajectory and talking about your ability to assemble a really strong team. So if you found this helpful and you want more support as you prepare an NIH grant, we have a free resource library that is full of tools and resources for you to help you do just that. So you can access that resource library through the link in the video description. So go ahead, sign up and get access to all of those tools and resources to help you write a really strong and clear and persuasive NIH grant. See you next time.